take away phone, you take away internet from a person, they go through withdrawals, they go through the inability to be able to create dopamine, right? Because they're at a dopamine deficit. They become a shell of a human, which is exactly what substances do. That is where we are right now on the timeline of humanity. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the cold, hard facts of brain rot. And I just want to go ahead and blow your mind immediately and tell you there was a study done in 2023 that found that on average, a person looks at their phone 96 times a day, 96 times a day. That's once every 10 minutes. That is insane. Do you know why that's insane? I'll tell you. It's insane because... You cannot possibly enter a flow state or a state of deep focus with a distraction every 10 minutes. And if you don't know why that's important, it's because that's where creativity is. That's where critical thinking is. That's where the ability to enjoy the tasks that we do lies, is in that deep focus state. And it's just impossible to reach if we're being distracted once every 10 minutes. So if you like facts like that, I'm going to tell you a lot more. So let's get into it. So instead of deep focus or being in a flow state, what we're actually doing is getting caught in procrastination loops, comfort scrolling, and our brain is actually physically changing due to this new field of study. It's fun. It's called cyber pathology, and it has to do with how your addiction to technology is physically changing your brain. It is terrifying. Let's talk about it. Procrastination is a really fun thing that we all talk about and people on the internet like to really kick us in the face for, even though we all do it. Um, but the thing is, it's like you're not you're not really avoiding the things around you. You're, you're kind of avoiding like life a little bit, but that sounds kind of harsh. So let me, let me put it this way. It's, it's you versus you, but it's wearing a mask. And that mask makes you think that it's you versus your environment. It's a survival mechanism. It's a coping skill with the pressures of life and everything around us. But it's actually doing a terrible job at keeping us happy long term. And we get caught in something called a procrastination loop that goes a little something like this. There are things around us that we know we should do, but to do them would like make us feel pain somehow, like psychologically or internally, but we just don't want to do them. So we do something else and we put it off. And by putting it off, there are more and more things that we need to be doing, but we keep putting them off and off and off until they stack up and they make us spiral spiral into a place that is super negative, super dark, and now the one task that we could have completed now is 20 tasks that feel extremely overwhelming and like we just can't complete. So what do we do? We then go back to procrastinating even harder. This procrastination loop is like, it's not that deep, bro. It's, it's what we all do. And then we all get that wild hair to be like, I actually am going to go do those 20 things. And we make a day out of it. And we feel good after that day. And we think to ourselves like, wow, that felt great. Why don't I just do that all the time? I'm going to change. I'm going to start being that person. And then the next day, the cycle restarts all over. <laughs> Humans are cool. So we've known about this procrastination loop for a really long time. The laws of psychology, the rules and theories of psychology, tend to be pretty well researched and well defined. What is new, however, is this thing called cyber pathology, which is that the technology around us is actually changing our bodies and our minds. I feel like once you know about some of this stuff, it's really hard to look at your phone the same. It's really hard to look at those things that we go to for comfort, not just as a distraction. I, you know, that can be really harsh to say like, oh, every piece of technology is a distraction. No, sometimes it just feels good. Like we've, we've basically made relaxing synonymous with scrolling. And I, I think that everyone that tells you like, just don't look at your phone. Blah, blah, I think that's really hard in today's society. And I, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. What is true is understanding what it's doing to you, getting a handle on it, controlling your feed and what gets put in front of your eyeballs. But the main thing is this. It's not really your phone that you're addicted to. It's the slot machine behavior, okay? And that little hand-to-mouth behavior starts to become the thing that our brain, which is highly plastic and moldable, our brain molds according to our actions every day, all the time. And so when, we, when we're doing a thing so constantly and consistently, our brain adapts to that. And the way that it is adapting is not good. The average TikTok user spends 95 minutes a day on that app. That is insane. That is over an hour and a half. Then there was this other study that was done in like 2021. It's called the Microsoft study, or as most people know it, the Goldfish study, that says that short form content 
content, the little 60 second scroll of num nums, make it to where we can't focus on things for longer than about eight seconds, which means a goldfish has us beat when it comes to attention span. <laughs> There are a lot of studies on this type of thing, both past and present, that are really, really interesting. And before I tell you what I believe to be the most interesting of all these studies, we need to talk about the prefrontal cortex. Um, it's a very important part of our brain. It's what separates us from the animal kingdom. Not that animals don't have one, they're just not as developed as ours. Actually, you could say that having a profoundly developed prefrontal cortex is part of what makes us human. Okay, so now, knowing that, I think I have to let Shannon in. Hold on a second. I think I locked her out. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk about a cliffhanger. All right. Anyway, there was this study in 2019 that basically found out that um, our dependence uh, on technology and our behaviors of picking it up constantly, constantly is actually causing our prefrontal cortex to shrink, which means we are becoming a little less human. Well, what exactly is the prefrontal cortex even for, Taylor? That's a great question. Impulse control. And I wrote a little list of what impulse control in the prefrontal cortex actually affects throughout our day-to-day -day lives. And it turns out some of the stuff's pretty important. Let me read it to you. Um, time management, productivity, regulating emotions, making long-term versus short-term financial decisions, social interactions, and relationships. In short, everything we need to be a happy, healthy human being. Now, is there is there something that you know of and I know of that also, when taken by humans, affects all of these things negatively? There is. Substances. Substances affect all these things and your impulse control through addiction. And that is exactly what we're being led to with this technology is a new state of addiction. And just like substances, you take away phone, you take away internet from a person, they go through withdrawals, they go through the inability to be able to create dopamine, right? Because they're at a dopamine deficit. They, they become a shell of a human, which is exactly what substances do. That is where we are right now on the timeline of humanity. The list goes on and on, but I want to talk about attention bankruptcy. Okay, I wanna talk about, well, what do you do then? What do you do? You can't just be like this doomer, dude. You can't just be like dooming it up with all these like studies and statistics about how like the brain is changing and technology is rotting our soul. You gotta give us something. I agree. There's actually two statistics that you need to know. There's two, just two. And if you know these two things, you can arm yourself with the only knowledge that you need to actually go out and kick ass. And the first is this. It takes about 15 minutes when if you start working right now on something, it takes about 15 minutes under the right conditions to enter a flow state, a state of deep focus, okay? Now, a distraction from your phone or a notification or something like that, if that happens, it takes 23 minutes to get back to a state of focus, not deep focus, just focus, okay? So 23 minutes, I got distracted. So I sit down, I'm gonna work, right? I sit down and I'm gonna work, but ba boom, I get distracted by something. Okay, now it's gonna take me 23 minutes to refocus on what I was doing, just to get back to normal, just to get back to zero. And then it's gonna take me another 15 minutes to get in deep focus. That's almost 40 minutes, okay? 40 minutes from the moment you put your phone down to when you go into deep focus, okay? That's your brain turning the car around. That's how long it takes, which means if you make the decision to go work, to go be creative, we're gonna talk a little bit more about deep work and deep focus here and really how absolutely amazing it is. Because I feel like if it, people have heard these terms, but if you don't know some of the studies and statistics, right? I brought positive statistics to this video as well, not just doomy ones. You're welcome. <laughs> Once you understand those, you start to understand how valuable that state of mind really is, right? So basically what I'm saying is if you make the decision to go into a deep work, deep focus type of environment, you have to protect that 40 minutes from when you put your phone down with your life. You have to you have to treat that very special, whether it's airplane mode, leave your phone out of the room, turn your speakers off, disconnect your Wi-Fi, lock your doors, hide your children, board up the windows, whatever you gotta do. Cool, let's talk about why deep focus and flow states are kind of like a superpower. For starters, 
you're not crazy. You do have that voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough, the thing that you're doing is not good enough, and you will never be good enough. That This is a well established psychological thing. People have this voice. But here's another established psychological fact. It's called transient hypofrontality, which is a really cool word. But what it means is when you enter a deep focus state or a flow state, that voice goes away. It shuts off when you enter deep focus. Doesn't that sound nice? That's number one. Number two, there was another study done back in 2013 that said that basically when you enter a state of deep focus or flow state, you don't just get 100% more productive. You don't just get 200% more productive, 300%, 400%, no, you get 500% more productive, 500%. Imagine if by protecting that 40 minutes leading up to that deep focus, you were basically putting jet fuel in your mind and you were saying, I'm about to unlock myself times five. That's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing by giving yourself that 40 minute primer and then protecting your environment and then setting the time aside to do deep creative work. That is where it happens. It happens in that flow state. It's also athletic. It, uh, there's a lot, there's like a million dollar industry of people who go work with professional athletes to get them into a, teach them how to get themselves into a flow state before a game. So that way they can just go out and muscle memory it up. Pew, right? Okay, cool. So artists, musicians, painters, great thinkers of the world have have really taken the idea of deep work and a flow state and harnessed a step-by-step -step process to get themselves into that state of mind to be able to produce great things. But not only is it good for creative work, it's also great for learning because it turns out that when you get that transient hypofrontality and you turn off that little voice that says you're not good enough and your brain becomes a sponge of new and novel information, that, you're, that your synapses begin firing at a higher rate. You start making connections stronger and faster than before, and you become a very fast learner. See, this is pretty cool. It's like, it's it really, like you, you thought superpower was an exaggeration. It's not, it legitimately is a superpower to be able to access this state. Become a superhuman in only 40 short minutes. If that was the ad, you'd buy the product. Guess what, it's free. And now for the fourth and most interesting, to me anyway, fact about deep focus and flow states, which is this time distortion. Yes, when you go into a flow state, time moves a little bit differently, okay? It can, hours can pass by in just minutes, okay? And minutes can feel like hours, just like a dream state, right? And just like some dreams, you enjoy it very much. That's nice. You want to stay there. You want to be in that moment. You want to ride it out like a nice calm wave. What's interesting about the idea of time distortion during a flow state is a couple of things happen. Number one, your, your, your heart rate lowers where anxiety is at its absolute lowest levels. It raises confidence because you are laser focused in on what you got to do. And it unlocks the highest of creative potentials because you're not even bound by time. You are just creating in that moment and doing the work. And the work can be washing dishes. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything super extreme. It can be anything, okay? That's what entering a flow state can do. It can bring a sense of well-being, make you more productive. It can do all these amazing things, right? And the thing to remember here is this, the more often you let yourself slide into that positive headspace, the better you'll get at doing it. Just like trying to intentionally fall asleep. The harder you try to fall asleep, the more difficult it becomes for some reason. But if you let yourself just like slip into that sleep-like state, well, not sleep-like, it actually is a sleep state, but you know what I mean? It becomes easier. You realize that it's the, the resistance that's holding you back and you're you can't force yourself into the state. You have to just let yourself slide into it, right? And the more you do it, the better you'll become at it. Imagine if you could be 500% more creative, more productive, lower your heart rate, lower your stress and anxiety. That would be great. Imagine if you knew and were armed with the knowledge that you actually can do that anytime you want. And part of the thing that was stopping you from doing that is this little thing in your pocket. And it's just like, right? So it's not just that short form videos are rotting your brain and making you not able to keep up with the goldfish, which is true. It's not just that technology in general is bad. It is the slot machine behavior of constantly letting your brain think about, you know, those false vibrations you get in your pocket. You're like, I swear, dude, I swear, bro, my phone was going off. Yeah, you probably did because the technology is changing our brains. That's a terrifying thought, dude. 
when we look out into the world and we see anxiety and depression and relationship problems and all that stuff, it's really, it, it feels kind of like a, like a cop out. But if you look at the, the, the data that, that actually is the truth, these, this technology that's making our lives more convenient, which is great, is actually making us kind of less human. And I'm sorry, I don't have like a super positive, actionable thing to end this video with. I just, you know, I'm looking at all these studies. I'm looking at this information. I'm thinking about brain rot. My kid is waking up from nap, so I got to go. As always, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Please leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. It's like the highlight of my day. So um, I will talk to you guys later and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.